I recently started learning Rust. On stream, actually. If you want to watch that, I'll leave a link in the description to the VODs of the streams. And it's actually part of the reason why there aren't many videos on my channel. I pretty much have nothing to show you so far. No boilerplate. The guy that makes fast technical videos about Rust made this amazing video called How to Learn Rust. I'll leave that in the description as well. So in it, he describes what resources you can use to learn Rust. One of them is Rustlings. And it's actually the most confusing using a resource which I found it difficult to understand how to use. And in this video I'm going to show you how to use Rustlings. First of all, naturally, you go to the GitHub page and then you can pretty easily understand how to install it. On Linux you'll just have to use this command. And the way the installation works is pretty strange because you both install a program, a binary that you can run called Rustlings, as well as the repository itself. So let's run this command and see what we get. It takes quite a long time, but don't worry about that, it's supposed to be the case because it installs a bunch of packages and it also compiles them, so that can take some time, but that's normal. Alright, it installed and it says run Rustlings to get started. That's actually not what we're going to do right now. If we ls the current directory, you can now see the Rustlings repository here, which means that when you install Rustlings, make sure to pick a directory that you actually want this subdirectory to be in. Alright, so so now we're in Rustlings, so let's ls to see what we have here, and it's a lot, a lot of stuff. So let's open it in VS Code, and open intro1.rs, and see that even though I enabled REST Analyzer and even better Toml, which are the extension that you're supposed to install in VS Code by the way, even though I did that, now when I go down and try to print line, I get no IntelliSense. The thing that you're saying is just IntelliSense for the words that are here. So, how do we get IntelliSense? First of all, I personally use WSL, and matter of fact, I recommend doing that to you as well. So, the jank setup that I have to do with WSL is installing Rust both on Linux and on Windows. Why do I do that? It's so VS Code actually can give me IntelliSense. If you only install Rust on Linux, you won't be able to get the extension to work. Not this one, this one. So first of all, make sure that you install Rust on both systems. If you only use Windows, only install it on Windows. If you're specifically using Linux, not WSL, then obviously only on Linux. All right, and now that you have done that, you should run Rustlings LSP. That will generate a file for us that will make the extension work. And if you're on Linux, this will immediately just work. But if you're on WSL, we'll need to do one extra thing. It generated this file that we're going to get to. It's called rustproject.json. This file, for some odd reason, was hidden from me. And that's probably because it's in the git ignore and therefore ignored. There is a setting in VS Code that hides all of the git ignore files. The way that you can fix that is, well, you could use Ranger, but I'm going to give you a simpler solution. You do code or code insiders, but it's just that code insiders is alias to code for me. And then you rust project, you can press tab, boop, and that will open that file in VS Code in case it's hidden for you. If it isn't, just open it. Now, this is a bit difficult to look at. I'm sure you will agree. So let's format it first with whatever, go to the top, and this is what we need to change, this current string. Because currently, it points to the Linux thing, which VS Code cannot access. Maybe if you install the WSL extension for VS Code, it will work, but I haven't used it, so I won't recommend it. Maybe it is the correct solution, I'm not sure, honestly. So, what we need to do now is to point this path to the Windows thing instead. And the path to the thing on Windows is actually pretty similar to what you're seeing right now. So, let's go gr and to grab that path. First of all, we go to C, now to users, then to your user, dot rust up, then toolchains, then the only folder that's there, then lib, rustlib, srs, rust, and library. And this is what we need, this directory. All right, we have the Linux path now, but we actually have to specify the Windows path here. Instead of having to change all the backslashes and other stuff, manually what you can do if you use WSL is use WSL path dash W 
and the path now we get a proper windows path now we just paste it and to be fair we still have to replace all the backslashes with double backslashes great it should work now but for it to work we first of all save and close the file then Control shift p rust analyzer restart server and after you do this your lsp or your intellisense will start to work and as you can see it does it already uh, gives us a couple of functions that we can use actually no all of those are macros but doesn't really matter okay now let's actually look at all of the sub commands of the rustlings command so the way rustlings works overall is it's a bunch of rust files that you have to make compile and you can use these subcommands to check whether you completed an exercise or failed it. So let's try them out. First of all, we'll do verify. Rustlings verify. What verify will do is that it will compile exercises until the one that it can't compile. The first exercise is intro 1. It compiles by default, so we don't have to change anything in it, except the I am not done. So let's try to run Rustlings Verify again. You would expect to go to intro 2. We're still on intro 1. The reason for that is because of this I am not done comment. So you'll have to, first of all, see if you complete it in exercise, and then if you did and you want to go on to the next one you delete this comment however i don't recommend both completing the exercise and deleting the comment at the same time because that way when you run rustlings verify you won't see this like nice message with the congratulations and all so first you complete the exercise you run rustlings verify and then once you verify that you did it correctly you remove the comment to go to the next one so let's run rustlings verify again and now, after it compiles intro 1, it will go to intro 2, as you can see. And since we didn't do anything in here, it will fail. So you might have noticed that Verify, even though it already compiled the first exercise, it had to recompile it again. Meaning, every time that you complete another exercise, Verify will compile all of them up to the current one, meaning that it's incredibly slow. However, there is another command that's called Rustlings Watch, which in theory is very cool. It will recompile files as they change. So let's actually complete intro 2. I hope it's not going to be too much of a spoiler because of how simple it is. All right, we completed it. So now when we go to the terminal, first of all, we save the file, we go to the terminal, we expect it to recompile it, right? Right? but it does fucking nothing it just waits there so maybe we need to execute some command no there's no such command that would like do the thing that this command is supposed to do so what i think is maybe rustling's watch only works properly on linux but if you're using wsl for some reason maybe it doesn't work i'm not sure why maybe that's just a me thing so definitely check if it works for you because it sounds like an amazing sub command but if it doesn't don't worry, it's not really your fault, because you're not the only one that has that issue. So, the command that I actually use is rustlings run next. And this is the command that I recommend you use as well. So run next only will need to compile the next exercise, not all of them before, like Rustlings Verify does. And if we run next again, it still prints this successfully message instead of going to the next exercise. Can you guess why? That is because of the I am not done comment. So if we remove it and run it again, we go to the next exercise. And this is actually how I figure out the order of exercise that I have to go to. I just run next until I get an error and here it is, the path to the next exercise. But before we go to it, if we even do, <laughs> I think I've showed everything to you. In every exercise folder, so currently we are in the intro folder, there is a readme file that I really recommend you read before you do any exercises. Because here you will see all the things that you're supposed to have read by this point. Because Rustlings is not the only resource that you're supposed to be using first of all the book also known as the bible funnily enough and rust by example and after you go through those specified by this readme then you can indeed go to the rustlings exercises i think that's the best way to do it and before i go very important to actually read the comments that are there sometimes they will give you pretty important information so don't just ignore them like you would in the actual code because usually comments are just something you ignore, 
or at least that's what I do. And if you enjoyed this video, press a like, type some comment, maybe you have a question or a suggestion. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!